Hello, this is Dr. Alex Vasquez, and this is uh, part one introduction on the topic of psoriasis. Information in this presentation comes mostly from the research I reviewed in my book, Understanding and Treating Psoriasis and Psoriatic Arthritis, a guide for patients and doctors using integrative and functional medicine. This information was updated from my previous publications on this topic in my textbook, Integrative Rheumatology and Chiropractic and Naturopathic Mastery of Common Clinical Disorders. All of these books and additional information are available from my website, optimalhealthresearch.com. The books are available from amazon.com and many other bookstores. Before we start the information on psoriasis, what I'd like to do here is give you a quick overview of my educational and uh, professional background so that you'll have some understanding of the perspective from which I speak. My education is that of a Doctor of Chiropractic uh, graduate of University of Western States in Portland, Oregon, Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine graduate of Bastyr University near Seattle, Washington, and a Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine graduate of University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth, Texas. I've certainly read thousands of articles and books, and I've amassed thousands of hours of postgraduate training in seminars, clinics, and hospitals, uh, many years of experience working with thousands of patients. Publications and presentations, I'm an international lecturer to physicians and clinicians on integrative medicine and functional medicine, as well as various aspects of preventive health care and nutrition. I've written several textbooks for doctors and health science students. I've authored approximately 100 articles and letters in professional magazines and peer-reviewed scientific journals. My current professional activities include acting as an associate, adjunct, and affiliate faculty member for several universities and postgraduate institutions, compiling research, conducting research, and authoring books and articles as well as seeing patients. I'm also active in healthcare product design, and I have more information on my seminars, presentations, and textbooks at optimalhealthresearch.com and more information about my private practice uh, within the scope of naturopathic medicine here in Portland, Oregon at HealGrowThriveMedicine.com. So regarding the formatting of this presentation, my initial intent was to review all three of these articles within the same presentation. However, when I did that, the length of the presentation was 25 minutes, which exceeds the 15-minute limit on YouTube. So what I've had to do with this first presentation is actually split it up into the first three presentations. Once I get to the fourth presentation, I'll try to format them more concisely so I can review more individual research articles in fewer slides. So the first article I'd like to look at in this three article review comes from Clinical and Experimental Immunology in January of 2004. Take home message from this article is to say that psoriasis is a systemic immune disorder. It's not simply a skin disorder. Let's look at a few quotes here. We'll go through four of them. First, we want to say, uh, according to these authors, that psoriasis is a common autoimmune skin disease characterized by T cell mediated hyperproliferation of keratinocytes. T cells are a type of white blood cell, or what we might more generally call an immune cell. These T cells secrete inflammatory chemicals known as cytokines, and one of the effects of those cytokines is that when they interact with the keratinocytes, which are a type of skin cell, those cytokines cause the keratinocytes to proliferate too rapidly, and this is what contributes to the skin rash that we see when we look at uh, patients who have psoriasis. Uh, the authors go on to say that psoriasis is the only chronic inflammatory disease that has a strong association with HLAC, and about two-thirds, a clear majority of these patients, carry the more specific marker HLACW0602. Uh, HLA stands for human leukocyte antigen. Leukocytes are white blood cells. These are immune cells. And so this is a very specific immune marker or genetic marker, we might say, uh, again, tying the immune system intimately with this condition that we notice as psoriasis. Uh, the authors go on to say that chronic plaque psoriasis behaves like most autoimmune diseases, being characterized by chronic but fluctuating 
HLA-linked inflammatory process. The final quote that I'll read from this article says that CD8 positive T cells are responding to specific antigens in the psoriatic lesion. With the help of CD4 positive T cells, there are probably also antigen specific. So what the authors are reviewing in this statement and obviously many others in their article is that when we look under a microscope at the skin of patients with psoriasis, researchers are actually able to identify the types of white blood cells that have infiltrated into the skin and are causing the inflammation. The inflammation itself is actually coming from the CD8 positive T cells because those are what we call effector cells. Those are cells that actually do the, the work of tissue damage. And the CD4 positive T cells, those are often called T helper cells. Those are the cells that uh, communicate via certain inflammatory chemicals uh, messages to the CD8 positive T cells to tell them to attack certain tissues or to form a very specific immune response. So by looking at these cells under the microscope and understanding how these cells interact, researchers are, are better able to understand psoriasis as an immune disease, not simply a dermatologic or a, a skin disease. Other data uh, not reviewed in this article but which many of us are familiar with is the fact that patients with psoriasis uh, have much higher rates of depression, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity. Between 5 and 30 percent of patients with psoriasis will develop an inflammatory arthritis which can be disabling and is often very similar to rheumatoid arthritis. So again, psoriasis, and this is the major point that I want to make with this slide, psoriasis is not simply a skin disorder. It is an immune disease, we could say, uh, that acts like an autoimmune condition, very similar again to rheumatoid arthritis, and that it needs to be addressed and treated on a holistic, integrative, multi-component uh, fashion or manner in order to help these patients achieve the best results possible. If we simply put creams and salves on the skin, we're not addressing the underlying problem. We need to address the underlying problem if we're going to address the condition in its totality. Implications of this research are quite clear to me, and that is that psoriasis is a systemic inflammatory disease with major negative and potentially catastrophic direct and indirect health consequences, psoriasis should never be treated as if it were simply a skin disease. So it is a systemic inflammatory disease. These patients have higher risk of cardiovascular disease uh, as well as depression, obesity, and diabetes. Uh, the direct and indirect consequences are quite severe. The systemic inflammation, when it uh, overflows, we could say, into the joints, uh, that's obviously a euphemism, but a lot of these patients do develop um, a systemic arthritis or a musculoskeletal arthritis, we should say. And that can be disabling for a lot of these patients. It's very similar to rheumatoid arthritis, as I mentioned before, and it can lead to disability and inability to fully engage in life and certainly to have a good quality of life. The same inflammation that's associated with the condition can also contribute to other conditions, such as diabetes, obesity, and cardiovascular disease, which of course can lead to heart attack or stroke. So the conclusions and summary of this brief three article review have shown us that psoriasis is a systemic inflammatory disease. It is not simply a skin disease. And psoriasis behaves and has pathologic features consistent with an autoimmune disease. Number two, Molecular mimicry between human skin keratin and bacterial M peptide causes immune cross reactivity. Number three, patients with psoriasis may have their condition triggered or worsened by certain drugs, such as lithium beta blockers or anti malarial drugs. Their susceptibility may be due to gene based defects in their detoxification enzymes. The implication of all this information is that psoriasis needs to be treated by comprehensive plans that address many complex facets of the immune dysfunction and the systemic inflammation. What I am against is the idea that psoriasis is and should therefore be treated as a skin disease. The research clearly shows that psoriasis is a systemic inflammatory disease, that its characteristics are consistent with an autoimmune condition. There is an abundance of, of uh, research showing that molecular mimicry between 
human keratin and bacterial proteins, uh, appears to cause immune cross-reactivity in these patients. And furthermore, that these patients have defects in their uh, detoxification abilities, and that affects their ability to metabolize not only medications, but also environmental toxins. So again, the implications are that these patients need to receive treatment plans that are comprehensive, multifaceted, and which address many of these concerns, as well as others that we'll review in, in upcoming uh, presentations. So again, this has been Dr. Alex Vasquez. If you're interested in my books, they're available on the internet at optimalhealthresearch.com and uh, other bookstores such as amazon.com. My books uh, include uh, Integrative Orthopedics, Integrative Rheumatology, Chiropractic and Naturopathic Mastery of Common Clinical Disorders, Integrative Medicine and Functional Medicine for Chronic Hypertension, which is an evidence-based monograph on the treatment of high blood pressure, and also Understanding and Treating Psoriasis and Psoriatic Arthritis, a guide for patients and doctors using integrative medicine and functional medicine. Thank you for your interest in these topics and in my publications and clinical work. For additional information, please see my websites at optimalhealthresearch.com and healgrowthrivemedicine.com for my naturopathic medicine practice here in Portland, Oregon.